What's up guys, this is Chris with Cowdog Craftworks and today I'm gonna to be showing you how I made a spear gun out of locally sourced rosewood. Stick around and check it out. First things first, we get the lumber down to a rough manageable chunk. Then, to take out all the variables as far as twisting and curve over time, I'm going to cut this into strips about 5 sixteenths or so for a glue up. Since rosewood is notoriously difficult to hand plane without a high angle iron, I'm just going to scrape these down till the mating surfaces are acceptable for a glue up. Now rosewood is an incredibly oily wood, so to ensure that the glue up bonds properly, I'll wipe everything with denatured alcohol to pull out the surface oils. You'll want to keep wiping this down until the rag runs clear, and if you're doing this yourself, note that it's going to take a lot of passes to be acceptable. Next, I'm building a mold for the glue up, which is really just some melamine constructed at a right angle. And that'll all be held together with some countersunk screws. Arranging the glue up does take a little bit of strategy. You want to arrange the strips in such a way that the forces of the curvature of the strips will counteract each other and inevitably keep the stock flat over time. If all the bends are facing in one direction, you'll likely have a bend in your finished product. Out of the clamps, I'm using the melamine mold as a reference surface to joint the exposed top on the table saw, and that'll give me a start to be able to get the rest of the stock nice and square. And then it's all cross cut to final length. The mortise for the trigger mechanism is measured and marked, and I'm going with the Neptonix Reef trigger mechanism because it's relatively cheap and pretty no frills as far as an install is concerned. And I'm using the drill press to hog out the bulk of the waist of the mortise. And the mortise gets cleaned up with some sharp chisels afterwards. Now, since I'm not an avid spear fisherman, I didn't realize the top of this mechanism needed to be just proud of the surface, so to cheat a bit on creating a through mortise, I just ripped the top off on the table saw. Next, the cross pins are marked and drilled, as well as the line release. If you haven't already, please do the LCS. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell for more notifications. I certainly appreciate it, and your engagement helps this channel grow. Also, share this video with a friend, and follow along on social media for more daily content. With the mechanism working on a dry fit, we're good to move forward. For the pistol grip, I'm doing another lamination on a much smaller scale, and the same principles as before will apply here. I'll be joining the grip to the stock with drawbore mortise and tenon, so I'm making a rosewood dowel on the dowel plate. And then to cut the track, I'm going to do that on the table saw with the dado stack. If you have a router table, that's also another good option. I'll make a pass to the trigger pocket and then flip and start from said trigger pocket back through the muzzle. That'll ensure that the track is even and centered. The muzzle needed a little more meaty thickness to account for power bands, so I'm just gluing and clamping on another strip. Then the grip is cut to angle with the miter gauge, and the mortise for the grip is hogged out on the drill press before being cleaned up with chisels as well. The tenon on the grip is cut down on the table saw with a tenoning jig and the miter gauge.
and then all the awkward bits are just finished off with hand tools. And then after a little sandpaper maintenance, the butt end is shaped on the spindle sander. And holes for power bands are drilled on the drill press with a Forstner bit. An extra detail here is that each hole gets a chamfer with the plunge router to accommodate for the tugging forces from the power bands. And then the whole stock is rounded over. For a more ergonomic grip, I'm using a power carving disc on the angle grinder and shaping it to fit my hand before sanding down with a drill attachment pad. This drill attachment set is nice because it gets me in all the little nooks and crannies, and the kit comes with a wide variety of sandpaper grits. And then the whole stock is sanded down. I'm pretty sure I went to about 320 grit here. The hole for the dowel to draw bore the grip is drilled. Then the grip is dry fit, and the same brad point bit is used to mark the center of that hole. After that, the punch marks just a touch toward the shoulder to create the offset and that hole is then drilled. The dowel is then driven in, which will draw the joint tighter together and fix it into place without any adhesives. All the excess material is then trimmed away with chisels and then flush trimmed on the back end with the flush trim saw. These trigger mechanisms are designed for larger blue water guns with these extra long triggers, so to have it fit behind a trigger guard, I cut it down with the angle grinder. Utilizing an offcut, I'll saw out a trigger guard and that'll get mortised in just ahead of the trigger pocket and glued in place. I want a magnetic track to keep the spear shaft down, so I'm drilling for some magnets which will be friction fit into the base of the track. Then for finish, Moss Epoxies was kind enough to send me out some product to try. I'm starting with penetrating epoxy to create an eggshell barrier that'll help the other layers of finish be applied evenly and seal out the wood from the elements. Now many spear guns are unfinished, however this rosewood was just too pretty to leave alone. With stage two, we're onto a two to one epoxy, which will give this gun another protective layer that is more substantial than the penetrating epoxy. And as a final top coat, I'm going with Bristol Finish, a sprayable urethane top coat. This is an alternative to spar finish that will provide for an additional layer of protection, as well as an awesome silky sheen. Ultimately, I applied around eight thin coats over the spear gun without the mechanical components installed. What I'm going for here is what we call a wet finish. Now, a wet finish is not really wet, but what I'm doing is every single time I spray a coat down, I'm waiting approximately one hour. And I set a timer just to make sure that I'm taking the guesswork out of this. And every time that hour hits, I check to make sure that the spear gun is dry to the touch and then I spray down another coat. And when you do the wet finish, you don't actually have to sand between coats, which is quite nice. It's almost like a lacquer where each coat's going to burn into the next coat. And the spray finish with the thinner makes sure that I have a nice smooth surface. And as you can see with these additional coats, the idea is just to keep building these coats on to further protect the gun from any sort of wear and tear that it can encounter. Meanwhile, waiting on finish to dry. So really, you're just gonna sit here and wait on varnish to dry? This stuff takes at least an hour to even be able to touch it. I'm on Instagram, I'm interacting with my followers. You know, you could at least go edit video or something. That's your job, nerd. I'm an influencer. I am so done with you. So done.
After that argument with myself, I'm going to cut down the cross pins to final length for the trigger mech, and those will get tapped in with a friction fit in the event the mechanism ever needs to be removed or replaced. Then the line release is installed. And finally, the reel is mounted. And with that finished, Bob's your uncle and we're all done. For the most part, I'm pretty satisfied with my first ever spear gun build, and the gun itself is absolutely gorgeous. The trigger is operational, and while that may seem like some low-hanging fruit, I'm counting it as a win. An extra special thanks to Moss Epoxies for sending out the finishing products for this build, which really brought this rosewood to life. Alright, now let's talk about some of this spear gun's shortcomings. The biggest flaw of this build is actually the grip placement in reference to the trigger. Essentially, the trigger is about three quarters of an inch to an inch too far forward to be nice and comfortable. Now, this doesn't make this gun unusable by any stretch, but it's certainly not the most comfortable setup for extended use. From a design standpoint, the fix here would have been to mortise the grip directly behind the trigger pocket, and perhaps doing two dowels instead of one, and even perhaps a double offset that will draw the tenon upward and then back against the stock. In either stead, I hope this video provides a lot of value and shows how some traditional woodworking joinery and techniques can be incorporated into a wooden spear gun build. And perhaps I might even have another one of these builds in my future with this fix in hand. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for more notifications, like, comment, you know the drill guys. Thanks for watching and as always, see you next time here at Cowdog Craftworks. Okay. Well, if you've stuck around this long, welcome to my whiskey room. Today I am drinking the Harozaki Small Batch Whiskey from Japan. Japanese whiskey is incredibly popular these days, therefore this may be a little bit harder to find on a more national or perhaps worldwide level. What I can say about Japanese whiskeys is that they are incredibly clean tasting. They're not overpowered with the smoke. Very light colored whiskey with very subtle flavors that aren't necessarily overpowering. One of the nice things about this Japanese whiskey too is that there's absolutely no coloring or chill filtration. It's all natural and absolutely delicious. Cheers, thanks for watching.